Take a picture and you save it on your phone, but it's not in your phone. It's in the cloud. That's a lesson we all should take from the celebrity photo hacking scandal. Nude photos stolen from stars like Rihanna, Jennifer Lawrence, and Kate Upton caused a furor. Never mind the issue of whether it's smart to take naked selfies. Well, this is a privacy matter that affects everyone who stores data online. Paul Levinson is professor of communication and media studies at Fordham University. He's also the author of the book, The New New Media. Professor, let's take a walk through some of the technical aspects of, of what's going on. Explain the cloud. What, what is the cloud? It's just a metaphoric term for an online place where you store data of any sort. So, you know, if everybody knows about YouTube, Facebook, you upload photographs, videos to those sites. Mm -hmm. They are, in effect, clouds. But what makes the cloud that Jennifer Lawrence uploaded her photos different is that she didn't make a decision specifically to upload those naked photos to that cloud. Because as a way of helping people, how many times have we taken a photo and we really want to keep that photo and somehow we press the wrong button and it gets deleted, or we take a beautiful photo of something and then we lose our phone? So in response to that, Apple and Google and other companies created this automatic method, mm -hmm. which works in a very good way for the most part. As soon as you take a photo, it's automatically uploaded to a place on the web. You know, look, I, I, I got to stop you yeah. right there. Yeah, we, we, we have other things that concern most of the public here when it comes to uh, privacy. But who in the world is going to take a, a nude picture of themselves with all the, I mean, I just don't, yeah. I don't understand this, this craziness. Yeah. Well, you know, you could consider it a form of citizen journalism, except we could call it citizen porn. Uh, <laughs> up until pretty recently, when there were nude photos, a photographer came in and took the photos, and mm -hmm. they were posted all over the web. One of the things that the camera in every smartphone has done is allowed people to become their own pornographic photographers. And, and to put this in context, you know, it's not the end of the world that there are naked pictures out there. No. If you look at human history, you look at Renoir, Renoir his paintings, Raphael. Michelangelo, can, I mean, let's go down the list. That's right, and you can go back to ancient times and see nude sculpturings of, of men and well, women. Well, well, let's get beyond that, Paul. Yeah. Let's talk about, you know, how uh, can the people who made these photos, is there any way they can be prosecuted? Well, not really. First of all, it's almost impossible to find them because mm -hmm. if someone is able to hack into someone else's cloud, they're pretty sophisticated technologically, and it's very, very easy to cover your tracks. So it, it is a crime of sorts. Whoever hacks in and steals someone's mm -hmm. photos, nude or not, is stealing someone's property. But right now, it's very hard to track these people down. Not only that, the laws aren't even yet up to speed as well, far as our technology. Well, and, and I, I've talked about this time and time again on this show and, of course, on the Rise Exchange and others. I guess the point of the matter is you have all this technology, but you don't have anything put in place to protect yourself. So, I mean, this may be a rhetorical question, and I guess it is, Paul. How does one protect their online accounts? How do, how do you protect uh, other online sources uh, that most of us, in some form or fashion, are involved in in this new age of technology? Well, the, the fundamental principle in protecting yourself is don't put anything online that you wouldn't want your grandmother to see. Mm -hmm. And that probably also could include personal financial information. But we need to realize that once something moves mm -hmm. from our personal device to any place online, it could be up in letters over Times Square the next second. But Paul, this is also another thing. And I, I, I saw this, uh, one of my college uh, uh, classmates uh, put a picture of me online at a Purdue, Michigan game uh, with three friends. <laughs> Luckily, there was nothing there that anybody could. But I mean, supposing other pe uh, people have pictures of you that could possibly be incriminating, uh, what can you do to protect yourself against that? You're out of luck. Because if I take a picture of you, in mm -hmm. a public place, mm -hmm. like a football game or anything outside other than breaking into your home and that's something else. But once I take that picture of you, guess what? That's my intellectual property, not yours. Okay, quickly, uh, we have less than a minute left here. Sure. Uh, uh, hacking into companies like Home Depot and, and the like. Uh, you go into a store, you swipe a card, all of a sudden you're in jeopardy. Well, pay with cash.
Yeah, that's one thing. I that, have mine in a mattress. What are you talking about? I'm old school, Paul. <laughs> Take a $50 bill out of your mattress, so that's what you should use for shopping <laughs> if you want complete protection. Okay, Paul Evanson, thank you so much. It's kind of sobering news here anyway. Just ahead, we're